Nature vs. Nurture, 1935. I wish to say a word or two on the omnipresent and indeed vexing question as to whether a child's character is already formed at birth, genetically predetermined, or whether it is environmentally conditioned, fully plastic, as in the tabula rasa in the strict style of English empirical thought. The woods are also home, as one might expect, to half-hearted and tepid variants of these two, which might be taken into consideration, and so we acknowledge the existence of those researchers who hold that the human personality is a little bit of this, but refreshingly, also a little bit of that, partially gene-determined, but also partially plastic. In other words, subject to considerable environmental conditioning. Having noted their existence, we move on. Therefore, for the most part, we shall find one educator saying, the character of this child is inborn and unalterable, and he will be quite correct. Likewise, another educator will assure us that ah, this student's personality is the resultant of the numerous societal and familial pressures and influences that have been brought to bear upon him during his childhood years. He too will be correct. We intend to tease you with no cheap paradox in endorsing both of these views, Rather, we are merely seeking to draw attention to the fact that the rival authorities are in fact employing the substantive character in two distinct denotative or lexical senses. So let us clarify as best we may these contentious meanings, and let us see if we can do this without wandering from our psychological reservation. We do all agree, I take it, that the character not only of man, but of every living organism upon our planet is genetically endowed. But there are also, I believe we should also agree, other types of earthly formations whose structural integrity is an unalterable quality of their very being. As, for example, the molecular architecture of rock crystal, which we feel justified in describing as predetermined. But the situation is very different indeed with the most highly organised form of terrestrial organism, namely the human being since every person carries around with him as if he were equipped with a virtual playing field of evolutionary possibilities whose precise dimensions and contours he has yet to determine. Just as surely as a man grows older with every minute that passes, and just as surely as an aged body is no longer that of a child, so surely is it that the nature of an aged man is not that of a young child. But what is it precisely that remains unaltered through all the changes that the body has endured as it passes through the changes from youth to old age? This is only one of those questions, the answers to which will be found only after we have developed our finest powers of discrimination and our richest powers of observation in learning just how the characterologist formulates accurate judgments in his field. One crucially important consideration must be borne in mind by the student. Every researcher and every educator who has been entrusted with the mission to teach the young must be strictly prevented by the full force of the law from illicitly gleaning information about his young charges from documents on file when his sacred trust is to be educating them in the classroom, in person. A genuinely responsible educator devotes his life to the minds and souls of his pupils. He determines the nature of their dispositions and he estimates their abilities, but again, and I must emphasize this point, he must never permit himself or anyone on his staff to employ a sneak thief's access to a file folder in such a way as to prejudice a student's future, such as by rumour-mongering about degeneracy, or by making cheap shots about flawed character structure rooted in unfortunate ancestry or violent upbringing. When a young student has come this far in his schooling, the chief question that should concern the educator is no longer whether nature or nurture rules the roost. Not even the most blasé academic could feign an interest in the praxis here. All that we demand now is that the educator attempt to assist his student as he tries to achieve such results as are within his reach.